Okay, so what I've got here is a crucial one terabyte NVMe drive. So this was on sale on Amazon for the Prime Day sale. I was going to buy the 500 gig option and that was only £35. I was sort of tempted by the fact that the one terabyte option was only about £65. So I decided to pick this up. Now if you read the reviews, this is sort of called an entry level NVMe drive because apparently it's not super duper fast or it's not the fastest drive you can buy. However, it still should be faster than a SATA SSD. So let's check this out. So obviously you get some sort of warranty information, blah, blah, blah. And then getting to the main attraction itself here, you have the SSD, quite small. It was actually a bit smaller than I was expecting. All right, and there it is. My plan is to partition this into two, so one half for Windows, one half for a Hackintosh partition. So let's see how that goes. The installation process will differ from motherboard to motherboard, but in most cases, you want to first locate where the NVMe drive is going to go. In most motherboards, it will be found underneath where your graphics card normally is, so the top PCIe slot. The next thing you want to do is locate the screw you used to hold it down. Now, this does not come with the NVMe drive, it's usually found with your motherboard. So you might want to look in the box of your motherboard, or in my case, it was actually held down onto the motherboard in the exact right position. So all I had to do was remove that screw, and when I went to remove that screw it actually lifted up the standoff with it so I had to just simply screw the standoff back down by hand. The installation process was then as simple as plug the NVMe drive in, push it down and screw over the NVMe drive into the standoff and that was me done. So the next step was simply just to get my operating system installed. Now before I do that let's do some quick sort of benchmarks. So I'm going to open up Black Magic Disk Speed Test. So let's first as a baseline let's do my internal SSD which I don't think is that slow. All right, so we're seeing straight off the bat, we're getting about 400 megabytes read, right? And we're also getting about 400 megabytes read. So this drive is not very slow. And I think for most people, any SSD is better than an old sort of hard drive. But as you can see here that as we do continuous operation, this SSD is slowing down. Maybe this SSD isn't in the best shape, but maybe it's just not the best of the SSDs you can buy. So now let's run this test on my new MME drive and start. All right, so straight off the bat, this is way faster. We're hitting almost two gigabytes per second. I'm pretty sure this drive is rated at 2.5 gigabytes per second, so we're obviously not hitting that, but I still feel like almost two gigabytes per second is faster than what I'm going to need. So as you might be able to tell, I've already tried this and I wasn't able to get it to work. I first tried using this cloning thing and there's a bit of a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to boot into the recovery off my current Hackintosh and as it's using open core it's kind of like a real Mac so it does have a recovery partition. My plan is to boot into the recovery partition and to reinstall Mac OS as I would normally as if you had a real Mac and you're installing an SSD and I'm going to go through the setup I'm going to tell it to migrate my data from this drive so let's give it a shot and hope it works. As you can see here we're now in the recovery partition of the Hackintosh so the process is as simple as reinstalling as you would do in any Mac so I've got my two partitions here. Untitled 2 is currently the Windows partition with 500 gigs and the other 500 gigs is Hackintosh NVMe, so we're just going to tell macOS to reinstall itself to the Hackintosh NVMe partition. Okay, so it's been about you know 20 30 minutes, and macOS is now fully reinstalled to this new NVMe drive. So the next step in progress is just to hit next and migrate my data across. As you can see in this screen, I've got two options. One is my old SSD, which is what I will be choosing. And you can see here, yeah, I've also got a time machine, which I haven't set up on my Hackintosh yet, but will be for the future. So that means that if I haven't updated that bricks or something, I can simply use a time machine as I would on a real Mac. Okay, now that you can see that the migration is complete, I've just got a few last things to set up. Okay, you can see here that the migration has finished and now I'm back into my desktop as it was like before. So you can see here that this is in fact my boot drive. So now the final thing left to do is, as the main drive is basically like a real Mac, we just have to go into the EFI partition, copy our EFI from this drive into this drive, which I'll do real quick. And we're just going to replace this with our own thing now. This folder is new. I'm not really sure where this came from, but I'm just going to give this the old delete. And that should be it. I'm rebooted. I'm back after a short break, and you can see that everything is working as you would expect. This is, in fact, my boot drive, and it is booting off from here. I'm doing a quick test. You can see we are getting the speeds that we expect.